Augmented reality feels like the future, but headsets that use it, that everyday people are wearing, haven't fully arrived. Microsoft's HoloLens 2 is pushing the field forward in a couple of key ways, but it's intended for enterprise use. I'm here at Microsoft's headquarters in Redmond, where we're getting a chance to use this and walk through it for the first time. The headset's design has been reconfigured this time. It's meant to slide over the head like a baseball cap. It's comfier, and the center of balance isn't so front heavy. And now the visor flips up like Microsoft's VR headsets. HoloLens 2, unlike the Magic Leap 1, another AR headset that creates 3D graphics that seem to blend with the real world, works with glasses on. I could flip it down over my thick glasses, no problem. The field of view is, is bigger, so now I'm basically getting something like that which is a lot better than it was before. And for most things on a desk, I'm able to see things without it being cut off. The thing about AR headsets versus VR is there was a point where the field of view cuts off, making holograms suddenly seem like you're viewing them through a narrow window. The HoloLens 2 expands its field of view to 52 degrees versus the first HoloLens 30 degrees. It may not sound dramatic, but it means instead of seeing things through a deck of card shaped window, it's more like a big paperback book. There were a couple of demos that we saw here on Microsoft's campus. One was of uh, the interface here uh, in, a, in a living room environment, uh, which they call the shell demo. I'm going to go over here, and there's a hologram floating on the desk that's showing uh, a shoreline, the power of wind. If I bring my hand out like this, I see the box. If I grab with both hands and pull, it expands, and then it goes back down. And over here, by the way, are some other Hologram things, this one's a, an engine with a spinning part that's over here, this is a windmill. But again, picking them up and placing them down and being able to drag and position them. So now it's just like sitting on the desk. There was also a, a demo using a new app called Guides that is uh, guiding you through how to do things and how to build things. HoloLens 2 also has eye tracking, which can not only work through my glasses, and seamlessly let me glance at objects and control them with my voice, but Microsoft says the in-headset cameras could sense emotion too. Eye tracking means being able to track your interests and attention and make interfaces more fluid. Enterprise interests include using it to study engagement and focus, but it also starts to feel like mind reading. There still aren't physical controls with the HoloLens too, but the sensor cameras can now detect more hand movements. The gestures make it seem more like you're pushing buttons or pulling corners of objects, minus the physical feedback. Microsoft is designing HoloLens 2 to become more collaborative, to use this with multiple people in a space using Microsoft's Azure cloud services and to connect to iOS and Android, because hey, you've already got phones that have AR. And the idea is to build an ecosystem so that people can start viewing the same stuff together. That type of collaborative AR started to emerge last year with Google and Apple on phones, but Microsoft's aiming to take it to a much more accurate direction that will be used for enterprise for much more mission critical uses. But what about the future beyond HoloLens 2? Ultimately the goal is these things transformed humans. They've empowered people and organizations to do things they just plainly were not able to do before. They will allow us to display space and time on a daily basis as if we were born instinctually with those superpowers. Microsoft is targeting HoloLens 2 for enterprise use, so this isn't for home users. And this is very clearly targeted for factories or field work or, or ways that people could really use this in a helpful way uh, in work environments and in areas where they can't uh, use a computer or something else. Will we start seeing this in consumer devices? Will we see this in other types of immersive experiences? No doubt, but what's interesting here is how Microsoft is working uh, to make hand gestures, expand the field of view, and to get ways that AR can start feeling more comfortable over longer periods of time. That's something that future AR tech, no matter where it is, is going to need to take advantage of.